Hi hey everyone, you alright? Not long up. I'm going to do a beef and dumplings today. Beef and ale with dumplings. I've had loads and loads of requests for dumplings and I don't make them very often, so I thought I'll make them today. I'm going to do them on the cooker. Usually I would do them in the slow cooker, but I know that everyone doesn't have one, so I'll do them on the cooker. So I'll get everything out. Take your meat out the fridge for at least half an hour before, let it come to room temperature. This is the meat that I buy. It's a rolled brisket. Now I know that seems expensive to come out of your weekly shopping budget, but you can freeze half of that. We're not going to use all of that. It's almost £30, but I'm only going to use one piece. If you've got a smaller family, cut the pieces in half and freeze them. That's the cheapest way to buy your meat. I've got that from my local butcher pioneer. Your butcher should be able to get you a rolled brisket. If you can't get that, some stewing steak's good shin of beef, the sliced brisket, that's fine. Now cut it into chunks, big chunks are better. If you're using rolled brisket, just cut the strings and untie it and unroll it. Now cut it into big chunks, into a bowl. Now don't be tempted to cut any fat off, you want that fat there so just leave it alone. That's a four kilogram piece of meat there. If that's too big for you, just half it. The other piece of meat I've wrapped up, that's going in the freezer. Now put two tablespoons of plain flour over the meat. Just get all the meat coated. We'll put a bit of oil in a pan and we're going to brown the meat in batches. If you do it all together it's just going to boil. And we don't want it boiling just yet. you're waiting for your meat to brown just finely chop an onion I've got mine in my little blender so as it browns just move it aside go in with your next batch all these firm bits on the bottom that's what we want we want those so add more oil if you need to The meat done into the pan with your chopped onion, half a teaspoon of salt, and three sticks of finely chopped celery. Fry those off for two or three minutes, and all of the brown bits from the bottom will lift off. Now, even if you don't like celery, put it in, you're not going to know it's there, it'll just make it taste lovely. Go in with two beef stock pots. I've got a 500ml bottle of ale, this is black sheep, you can use any. Just putting a little bit in, just to lift the gnarly bits on the bottom. We want the bottom of the pan to be clean. Beef goes back in the pan. With the rest of the ale. Top up with 500 mils of water. Look at the colour of this gravy already. Now you just know that's going to be good. Bring it to the boil. Once it's boiling, pop a lid on. Now reduce the heat to a simmer and we're going to cook that for two hours and I'm going to go and have a shower. Back again, fresh as a daisy now. So now we'll make up the dumplings and for that you need some suet and you can buy this anywhere this was in Aldi so you need 125 grams of this into your bowl 200 grams of self-raising flour half a teaspoon of salt or half a teaspoon of pepper and 150 mils of water if you want some parsley in there you can chop some up and put that in now at this point but you don't have to, they're fine without the parsley. Take your rings off, get your hands in and get it mixed together. There, so it comes into a bit of a ball, put it onto your board. You just wanna separate the dough into little balls like that. You'll get 10 to 12 out of this, depending on how big you want them. And I've got 13 pieces. So this has actually had three hours. The meat is nice and tender. See that breaks on the back of the spoon. But I want my gravy to be a bit thicker. 
So we need a tablespoon of corn flour in a little cup. With a splash of cold water, plenty. Stir it up. That goes into your pan. Now don't add more than a tablespoon of corn flour at a time. You don't want it too thick. So let it come to the boil and you should see it thicken. I've just got some mashed potatoes boiling and some carrots and green beans. Now we're going to transfer the casserole into a dish so we can put the dumplings on top. There we go. We're just going to place the dumplings on top. They will swell up. They're all on the top there. Now that looks amazing already and it smells delicious. That goes in the oven on 180 for about half an hour. Got a quick last minute Yorkshire pudding going in. Now I can't be bothered to do individual ones so I've just done one big one. Heat your oil, you want hot oil in a tray, 220, 240, then your mixture, a cup full of eggs, a cup full of milk, a cup full of plain flour. I use a teacup, mix it all together, pour it into the hot oil, 220 for 10 minutes, turn it down to 200 for 20. They look good, 10 minutes more. I keep a tray on the bottom of the oven. I keep a tray on the bottom of the oven just to catch any spills and then that saves you cleaning the bottom of your oven every time you've cooked. I just wash the tray, fire it in the dishwasher. Look, you can see that rising. It's been in 10 minutes. I'm turning it down now to 200. There we go, that's all ready. Yorkshire pudding. Some turkey and veg. Gone. That's special. Those dumplings are delicious and that meat just disintegrates, it just falls apart. Give that a go, it's beautiful. Don't worry about the alcohol in it, it burns off so there's not actually any alcohol in there. Just a lovely deep tastiness that is really scrummy anybody would be happy to have that my family included it's literally gone within 10 minutes cleared <laughs> so enjoy your dinner whatever you are having give this a go you'll be pleased you did and you'll realize that dumplings are that easy you'll always make them yourself now have a great day folks and i'll see you soon don't forget to like and share